Hello my fellow YouTubers. This is Roy back again with part 5 of how to build Edley Scallon's magnetic generator. So at this part, what I did is I took down the, the motor block and everything from, it was sitting on that board there, put it back down in its place. Um, I like to work with it up higher, but uh, it's getting heavy, so I put it back down. Um, I installed uh, five stacked high magnets. I got the keepers on them. Um, this, and I put the insulator paper cardboard on top to separate this ring. I got the ring on, and the whole key thing here is how close we get to this uh, round tubing that I have going in the ground. Um, we're going to use that as the timer and what we're going to do is take one of these coils I'll use better wire but using the PVC we're putting a metal rod in the middle of it we're going to put that down into this pipe we're going to drill a hole at the bottom of this pipe where the bottom of that rod sits and let the wire to get the wire out so we can connect to that. And on the top here, we're going to, uh, if you notice on Edlius Gallon's, uh, uh, on his uh, picture of him bending over, looking like he's going to turn the wheel, if you look back deep on top of the pipe, I believe that's his uh, DC4 generator. Now remember, um, why it would be DC is because you need a commutator to make DC current, and this wheel is AC current, because everything is made in AC. So all currents are alternating. So to get DC, we want to run parallel. What we're going to do is we're going to use that DC to do two things. One is we're going to pull power off the battery, the 12 volt battery, car battery, and we are going to take that 12 volts, send it to this DC generator, and we're going to up the current. So it is going to send the current down through this pipe here. And remember on, mag on Edley of Scallon's magnetic currents, he mentions about uh, if you want stronger pulling force, what you would do is take a coil with a core and encase it in a iron tube and you would put a ring on top and allow that center core to touch the outside core and you'll have uh, the strongest uh, magnet or pulling power that you could have because you lose no magnets. So we're going to recreate that with this pipe and tubing here. And then we're going to hook it up uh, to um, the, one of the PMHs. And what we're going to do is the PMH will uh, alter the, um, well actually it won't, these magnets here. Every time one of these magnets approach, because remember, top head of this will be north, bottom head will be south. And when Ed mentions about his uh, tubing with the core inside, the core on the inside, we're going to have like a four-pole magnetic coil because the center core will be a positive, the outside part of that casing will be a negative, and the same on the bottom. So, And you will need that four cores because every time you get one of these magnets approaching the magnetic field of this, what will happen is it'll send it'll send a pulse over to the PMH which will go ahead and change the polarity on the inside and outside of this coil and what it'll do is it'll allow the magnet to come up to it it'll change the pole it'll push the backside of the magnet away as it's pulling it's changing pulling and then it'll be doing the same thing so this thing is very important for this wheel to be able to uh, turn on its own 
Um, the, the reason I'm doing this next video here, I wanted to show you something. It's very important to have all that structure around the wheel because what we're going to be doing is putting this on a straight 90 degree angle and when we start to shift and move the um, magnetic field from a uh, horizontal to a vertical to create this pyramid um, what, what we're, we're going to be doing is uh, working on how do we accomplish that right now and I came up with a great solution um, I'm going to take you guys over to my little test area there and I'm going to show you I'm mimicking there's five uh, stacked up V magnets just like here same charge and I'm mimicking the bolt inside these V magnets and learning how we can push up the magnetic field what we're going to do is in the middle here we're going to raise the field up we're going to make this thing stand up on its edge and, and by doing so I want to show you something so over here I got my voltmeter I got these V magnets what I have is I have uh, um, uh, some copper wire in a coil and if you see the inside I got a core now let me pull that core out because I want to show you a couple things and put the core right there we'll stick the, that back and basically we have north or south I don't know which is which but you got your two poles there and what we have is we're going to grab a v-shaped magnet and we're going to break the current by going by it and we're going to see anything pops up on the voltmeter now only thing you will notice is that little blinking right there is happening so that shows there's something going on in there so now we're going to go ahead and we'll put that down let's stick a core in it and let's see if we notice any difference now so the core is in there and now we're going to get and we're going to break the field so okay, hold on now we're sticking one handed here Like I said, these magnets are real strong now, so a little hard to work with one hand. But something I need to show you. So right now, we're going to break the field, and you're going to see no numbers. But why? You know, I, I asked myself, there should be stuff going on in here. You know, how come... We're not seeing anything. And I got these on millivolts too. So now we're breaking the current. But we're not really getting. Uh, we get a little bit there. See? All right, so now we're starting to show up a little bit. So we got a one popping up. So I'm going to put this back down. And we're going to change the, the idea. Now we're trying to see what's going to happen in here. If I were to wrap copper wire around these posts in here. To get a. Because right now, you have, treat these like a bar magnet, except for they come back at each other, versus them being straight, north on one end, south on the other. So now they come out and go around there. So what you have is, you have magnetic force coming out and, and doing your loop here, but you also have, on both sides here, of, of the field. So the same field goes from north to south on this axis here. It does the same thing, but it's laying down horizontal. And when you start spinning this, is what you need is that horizontal. And um, what we need to do is how do we get lift? And if to get lift, if you just kept the iron bar in there, you're not going to get any lift because it just the, the magnetic field is going to be on the outside. So what I thought was is I'll take this cable here, stick it on the block. I'll take actually the end of the cable and stick it to the base of that coil. Now... What I'm thinking here is, if I was to put a coil inside these, and I would connect the wire down bottom to the block. Why? Because it just makes sense. So right now, I want to show you something. Now, I'm going to go ahead and stick this other end of that voltmeter there, and now, I want to show you guys something. 
this here. It's touching. Let's put that over here. We got that there. We got the coil over here. And we got this going. Let's get that stuck in there. So now, look at the voltmeter. Wow. So now all of a sudden, you know, and everything's falling apart here. <laughs> so hard with, with just one hand. I guess I'm going to have to invest and get me like some little tripod or something. All right, so we're back to the voltmeter. And now look at the voltmeter. And I'm taking and breaking the field. And here you can see that we're no longer just at one. We are at millivolts. We are checking off the ground. Not the ground, but the body part. And then we got that bottom wire going to the body part. So it's actually pulling. Now, you'll see that as I move, the just touching the wire on the block is all I'm doing, just touching the wire on the block or the thing, you can see that it's going up. It's going up way past millivolts too. So that's just what happens when you put the coil inside these V-shaped magnets. Now, I'm going to stick this back over here, so it's kind of, you know, I don't know how, what kind of, what kind of, you know, back down low. So, it, you know, you need a good grounding. I guess I should almost clamp it or something, but, but, um, let's see if I stick it under there if it does anything. Nah, it's got to be separate, and you can see what it's doing. As soon as you touch that. And this is just from having the coil inside of it. Um, you can see that it's definitely high in numbers. And all I'm doing is just touching the, the metal part of it. So, and then we have the coil in here. And what's generating that energy, the fact that I got the copper wire wrapped around that post or inside that magnetic field. And let's talk real quick, because what happens with that magnetic field? You can see, look, I'm over here, I'm breaking the magnetic field, and the numbers are charging, and, and basically my thing just fell to the ground. But anyway, for, ain't worried about that. But I wanted to show you guys the numbers. And so what happens here? So this is a mock-up of what that would be. And inside here, what you're doing now is, instead of having just a magnetic field, horizontal now you're going to create a vertical because you're going to have a, a, a north and a south developed in this post here and in this post is going to be what I explained in my last video be little poles so the every one of these nuts is basically a north-south pole it's, it's sort of just like having on an atom uh, your 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 north and south running around your nucleus. So basically, this is as what we're developing here. And over here, um, you're going to have your your field coming out the top, coming down, coming back around, and coming up. And and same on the other side. And it's going to branch out, be tight, a little bit away, a little bit away, a little bit away, a little bit away. And you'll have a field like this, but it's a vertical field. So what's going to happen is we're going to give lift. So once we get this wheel turning, once that wheel's turning, and I'll just do, you know, I ain't got this much on here, but you'll see how close I got it to the pipe. And once we get this wheel turning, what's going to happen is centrifugal force is going to push the, it's going to reshape all this to make that pyramid. And it's going to push out the energy out of here. And what's going to happen is it's going to give lift. And once the, the field starts getting lift, you, you see, watch my hand. Field's going to be like this. All of a sudden, it's going to get lift. And when it gets lift, we're going to have it on the right angle to hit the top dead center of where the handle is right here. So I just want to let you guys know uh, this is how we got here. So what I'll be doing now is I will be wrapping wire copper wire inside around these posts in here and then putting the v-shaped magnets back around it i'm going to do it each and every one 
before I install the other V-shaped magnets in the filler here. Um, I will make my next video. I believe that'll be part number six. And you'll see your copper wires inside. And we're going to do them a special way. Because not only are we going to create just... We're not going to use a single wire. We're going to use four. We're going to use four copper wires. And we're going to wrap around um, the bolt with all four wires at one time. So we're creating, creating four pulses inside each one of these eight pulses. So uh, what we're going to do is put some good energy through it. You already see that it's capable of making a good amount of energy. Each one of these times eight on its own is going to be producing its own power to keep itself running once the timing set right on this. So you guys have a great day. Uh, the next video we'll have all the copper in place and the coils here and then we're going to be doing the same for the lift for for these four. Uh, we're going to now we're, we're going to cut it down from eight to four and then on these four you're going to have uh, wires wrapped around also and one thing I wanted you to notice that if you look on Ed Scallon's wheel and if you look down at it you'll see there's wire wrapped around these four posts and it looks like it's holding down the clover part of the top which I think it's doing two things one it's holding down but it's also the wire that's connected to the top parts of all these of these little mini atoms I'll call them um, all the top parts are here you notice Ed does have cement in there and what is in there nobody knows if anything's connected nobody knows but I will tell you he has these balls, these spheres, and I believe there's two of them. Possibly I thought there was four, which may be, but I think two of them, what, what, what they do is they're all connected. And we'll talk about that on probably two videos from there once we get to these center bolts on the connection of the wires, what wires, why we're creating four pulses in each one of these eight bolts. And, and then why are we going to narrow it down and, 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 and sort of restrict it a little bit? Um, these will be on the new videos. I'll show you guys. For the ones who are building their own machine out there, guys, I'll get you through the process and we'll get this thing running. You have a great night. Thank you very much for watching. This is Ed Leah Scallon's Magnetic Generator. And it feels so good to have it where it spins again. And basically, I don't even have it clamped down or nothing. This is just free moving. And what we're going to do is we're going to get it close enough to where it is being pulled by that pipe. And then through the center coil, it's going to be having a push. So the center coil, when it's charged up, it's going to be pushing. And um, it'll help along with this pipe to take this mass and keep it turning. Well, you guys have a great night. Thank you very much. Talk to you later. Peace out.